brother. Ben, you know what kind of questions never die? The ones about horcruxes. <laughs> I'll pause and let you stop laughing. Okay, didn't think we'd be on fire so early, did you? <coughs> In any case, over the weekend, I was hit up with one of these questions over on Twitter by a fan of the channel, Lindsay Fletcher, who asks, what would have happened if the Tom Riddle from the diary hadn't been destroyed and had come back? Would there be two Voldemorts? Would old Valdi become young Valdi? Excellent question, Lindsay. We've actually been hit up with several versions of this question over the years, so today I thought we would finally take a deeper look at it. Because really, why stop it just two? I mean, in the end, Voldemort's soul was broken up into eight different pieces, which left me wondering, could there have been eight Voldemorts? Hey guys, before we dive into today's theory, I want to make a quick announcement that Trivia Night is back. Coming this Friday, July 23rd at 7 p.m. Eastern, Ben and I are going to face off against MuggleNet in the ultimate Harry Potter trivia showdown. It is going to be a live stream here on the main channel. It is already scheduled, so you can set a reminder if you want to. Hope to see you there. I swear, you guys, I don't think there is a single scene in Harry Potter that has caused more confusion than everything that happens between Tom and Harry down in the Chamber of Secrets. How did Fox get down there? Because Harry was so loyal to Dumbledore. Yeah, right, no, I got that, but like, how did, how did that summon Fox? Because Harry believed, it's just, we, you know, we actually made a whole video about it if you want. And also, if Basilisk Venom destroys Horcruxes, then why wasn't the Horcrux inside of Harry destroyed when he was bitten by the Basilisk? It's because, it's because Harry didn't actually fully die, and that's just, you know, we made a whole video. And why didn't they use the chamber for the meeting place of the DA? Now that is actually a fantastic point. I have no idea why. They probably should have. Possibly the decor. There was a lot of snake statues and also like a really giant, dead, rotting basilisk carcass. That could, that could have been it. Getting out also seems harder than getting in. Amazing! This is just like magic! But you know what? That's not what we're here to talk about today. Today, we are trying to figure out if there could have been multiple Voldemorts running around. Because given what we see happen down in the chamber with Tom almost completely draining Ginny's life force and getting a whole brand new physical body, it feels like yes. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Yes, it is technically possible that there could have been at least two Voldemorts. And he really does get very close. I mean, before Harry stabs the diary, he has enough physical form to literally pick up a wand and Harry just describes him as just a little blurry around the edges. I mean, he was like a buffering error away from existing. Like, if he was a YouTube video, someone just had to click the little gear and reset the resolution to 1080. By the way, please raise your hand if you're watching this in the future and you're like, 1080? That's like the lowest setting. I'm trying to watch you on 20K. Either way, when Harry stabs a diary, it is enough to kill Tom before he takes on a full physical body. But my question then is, if he had completely killed Ginny and come back, would stabbing the diary have still killed him? Like, even after he's a fully fledged 1080p being, is he still just an extension of the diary? And this took some thinking, but I don't think so. I think this is the exact thing the clock was ticking on and why it's killing Ginny. Once all the life is drained out of her, it will be put into him and he will no longer be just a memory. Hermione says in Deathly Hallows that, Whatever happens to your body, your soul will survive untouched. But it's the other way around with a Horcrux. The fragment of the soul inside it depends on its container, its enchanted body for survival. It can't exist without it. This is why stabbing the diary works specifically when Harry does it, because at that point, the diary is still the container. But had the process been completed, I don't think this would have killed Tom because the container would now be the new body courtesy of killing Ginny. And weirdly, as I'm saying this all out loud, shouldn't the new Tom Riddle have looked like Ginny? Like, wasn't it? her life force? Either way, the new body would be the new container, which actually still lines up with how souls are transferred in other parts of Harry Potter as well. Or at least the portion of making a horcrux that we know about, where you have to kill someone in order to rip your soul to put it into something new. Although in that case, would the killing of Ginny be ripping the soul again? So would the new body then be yet another horcrux? I mean, I guess that would still work and even add up. I mean, the very last thing that or any bit of Voldemort's soul that became a horcrux did was commit the murder to make the associated horcrux. So young Tom Riddle would definitely know how to do it. So if that happened, would the diary still be a horcrux and you'd have the new Tom Riddle? 
And you have to destroy them both? Honestly, I am really not sure, and I guess it's up for debate. And it doesn't really matter because the transfer was never fully completed, but I would love to know what you think about that in the towel section down below. Please let me know. Either way, what we'd be left with is a real deal walking, talking Voldemort that is completely separate from Voldemort Prime, who is off hiding in the woods somewhere waiting for Wormtail to come find him in like a year. And that to me is proof that yes, it could have happened. Technically, there could have been two Voldemort. But then you also have to wonder, like, what would newly reborn young Tom Riddle have done? Because he would know that his own creation as a Horcrux into the diary's purpose would have been to anchor the main Voldemort here to the mortal realm. But young Tom Riddle's memories stop there. He has to learn from Ginny that Harry defeated Voldemort Prime some years later. But he'd also know that he was a successfully created Horcrux, so Voldemort Prime must still exist somewhere. So, would he seek himself out? And if so, to what end? Like, would he try and be the vessel for his own soul? Would he try and reabsorb Voldemort Prime into his own new body? That does seem like the most obvious choice, but I don't actually think that's possible. Or, well, let me rephrase that. I don't think that's possible for Voldemort. Hermione also tells us, Isn't there any way of putting yourself back together? Yes, but it would be excruciatingly painful. Why? How do you do it? Remorse. You've got to really feel what you've done. There's a footnote. Apparently, the pain of it can destroy you. I can't see Voldemort attempting it somehow. Can you? Yeah. In order to reassemble his own soul inside the single body, he would have to feel remorse. And I just don't think Voldemort can do that because if he could, then he wouldn't be Voldemort. <laughs> I mean, maybe you could argue that if there's anyone Voldemort could feel sorry for, it would be himself, but even then, I think he would just see that version of himself as a failure or weaker. Especially if he, Tom Riddle Diary of Voldemort, just succeeded in killing Harry, the grown up version of the infant that defeated Voldemort Prime. Look at you, you couldn't even defeat a baby. I, on the other hand, have just vanquished a 12 year old, so take that. Me? Not just 12, he was like two months away from 13. So what though, would he just destroy himself then? Also unlikely, I think. Like yes, that version of himself would be considered a failure, but he's still a part of himself and therefore more special and unique than anyone else on the planet. At least in his eyes. Think of it like Loki, like who did he fall in love with? himself. No, my guess is that young Tom Riddle would have tracked himself down, gleaned as much information from himself as possible, this is a weird sentence, and then, wait for it, made a Horcrux out of Voldemort Prime. What he would probably think of as the final Horcrux, the seven part soul at last. And in this scenario, he'd actually be right because this time Harry would be dead and not be throwing off the count. Although actually the diary wouldn't count anymore, so no, he still got it wrong. Voldemort also never pays the math budget. But do not let that commonality fool you. We are nothing like Voldemort. I mean, did you see the wedding Ben planned? Oh, you know what's funny that I just thought of though? Is that he's trying to have a seven part soul, but literally the entire time it's actually in seven pieces is when he is at his absolute weakest. Like from the moment he tries to kill Harry as a baby until he eventually kills Frank and turns the Gini into a Horcrux, that's when it's in seven pieces and he he, he like could not be weaker. God, he's so stupid. Anyway though, that's still all just a guess about what young Tom Riddle would do if in fact he came fully back. But even so, while it's technically possible two Voldemorts could have existed at the same time, I think for the most part, you'd only ever really have to worry about just the one. Because Voldemort would never let two of himself exist. I mean, who could he possibly see as a greater threat? than himself. They would absolutely try to kill each other. I mean, heck, this is part of why he changed his name in the first place. Ask for Tom, the barman. Easy enough to remember as he shares your name. Riddle gave an irritable twitch as though trying to displace an irksome fly. You dislike the name Tom? There are a lot of Toms, muttered Riddle. Although who knows, maybe he'd just like rebrand himself again. Nice to meet you, Voldemort. I'm Staldevort. Get it? Because I was created in a bathroom stall. No, come on, that's good. Oh, come on, you included the words I am in your anagram. Like, could you not make the letters fit? You could have been Lord Voldemortium. There you go, done. You're welcome. Prepare to die. Mocking Staldemort. <laughs> what a moron. I'll flush him away. Now granted in that situation, that's still only two Voldemorts, but I'm betting from his point of view, that's one too many. The real question though is, could there have been seven 
too many. Like, could the other Horcruxes have found ways to re-manifest themselves into living, breathing Voldemorts? Well, it's very hard to say, but I don't think so. For one, bear in mind, the point of a Horcrux as a tool to not die is not to re-manifest yourself, but to simply anchor your prime soul to the mortal realm. The diary is a weird situation. That is not how it works. It's not like I can't die because I'll just be reborn over there. It's just about making sure your main soul doesn't pass through the veil, if you will. And all the bits of soul that were inside of each Horcrux would be aware of this plan. They're all still a part of Voldemort Prime, and Voldemort Prime only has one goal and one thing he wants, which is immortality. But what about the diary that does come back, I hear you saying? Well, remember, as we said earlier, the diary actively learned about the fate of Voldemort Prime. And only after learning that he had been defeated did the diary take it upon itself to become real. The diary is also kind of unique amongst the Horcruxes anyway because it's the only one that was meant to be used in more of a weaponized fashion than as simply an anchor. But for argument's sake, could, let's say, the locket have re-manifested itself into another living, breathing Voldemort had Ron continued to wear it for longer and longer? I mean, similar to Ginny and the diary, the locket does learn about Ron while he's wearing it and it uses that information to try and manipulate him. I have seen your dreams, Ronald Weasley. But could it have become a real human? I don't think so. I think every part of what you see when the locket is trying to manipulate Ron is all part of the greater goal of don't get destroyed. I mean, for one, no matter what, Ron never could have opened the locket himself anyway. And the locket is acting in self-defense even before then, like when it tries to drown Harry because it senses the sword being nearby. The purpose of the locket's existence is to not be destroyed, and it is very cunning in this regard. And really, it's the same for the rest of the Horcruxes. I mean, look at the ring. Who could ever form a relationship with the ring? Whoever puts it on is immediately killed. The cup and the diadem we don't really ever see in action enough to know in what ways they could have been or were dangerous, which is a real bummer, if you ask me. Then there's Nagini, who has a blood curse on her, the main effect of which, besides being turned into a snake, is cannot be human. And then you just have the soul inside of Harry, which has been failing to corrupt him in any way at all for 17 years, except to give him some cool extra powers, like talking to snakes, so... Whoops. So, in conclusion, was it possible for at least two Voldemorts to exist? Yes. But even then, I think the diary only acted the way it did because it knew that Voldemort Prime had been defeated. And even though two could exist, they definitely would not let each other both exist. And all the other Horcruxes were only ever meant to serve as anchors whose purpose was to simply not be destroyed. But Ben, my question for you and everyone else is, what do you think, am I wrong? Could there have in fact been eight Voldemorts at once if everything had worked out in a really weird way? Let me know in the towel section down below. Also, reminder, this Friday, July 23rd at 7 p.m. Eastern, Ben and I are facing off with MuggleNet in the Ultimate Harry Potter Trivia Showdown right here on Super Carlin Brothers. It's going to be a live stream. We are going to be competing against MuggleNet, and you guys can play along as well at home. The stream has already been scheduled, so you can go check that out right now and set a reminder if you want to so you don't forget or make a donation because that's already live. All the funds from this live stream are going to It Gets Better. Hope to see you there again this Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern, right here on the main channel. But guys, thanks as always for watching today's video. Don't forget to leave a like on it if you haven't already, and subscribe so you don't miss any future Harry Potter action from us. If you want to see why the Horcrux inside of Harry was not destroyed after he was bitten by the Basilisk, you can check out this video right here. But Ben, until next time, I will see you in another life, brother.